Good evening. Welcome to Victory. Okay. Welcome to Victory, everyone. Glad to see you all here tonight. Take a few moments, now that you haven't already been doing this, and uh, greet one another, reach out to somebody new. If there's somebody here you don't know, take a couple minutes, then we'll open up in prayer. like to share a scripture tonight. It's from Psalm 84 in the Passion Translation, and it's called Longing for God. God of heaven's armies, you find so much beauty in your people. They're like lovely sanctuaries of your presence. So deep within me are these lovesick longings, desires and daydreams of living in union with you. When I'm near you, my heart and my soul will sing and worship with my joyful songs of you, my true source and spring of life. O oh Lord of heaven's armies, my King and my God, even the sparrows and swallows are welcome to build a nest among your altars for the birds to raise their young. What pleasures fills those who live every day in your temple enjoying you as they worship in your presence. How enriched are they who find their strength in the Lord. Within their hearts are the highways of holiness. Even when their path winds through the dark valley of tears, they find the pleasant oasis of refreshing where others find only pain. In their joy, it will become to them a brook of blessing filled from the rain of an outpouring. They grow stronger and stronger with every step forward until they find all their strength in you. So Father, tonight, we find ourselves standing in your presence, Lord. We're here for one purpose, and that's to encounter you, Lord. Lord, tonight we open up our hearts, we open our spirits wide. Lord, we ask that you would fill us with yourself. For this is eternal life that we might know you, Lord. Lord, we ask tonight that your spirit would brood over us, they would bring forth new creation realities in our lives, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the dew of your presence, resting, refreshing, Lord God, strengthening us. Tonight, we ask that we would be aligned with your heart, with your mind. We say, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We ask for a fresh infilling. We welcome the angels of God sent forth, activated by his word. Lord, we, we are open to you this night. We thank you. We thank you for your son Jesus giving us that open heaven, restoring us, bringing us back to the place oneness of unity with you, Lord. Lord, tonight we ask that we would run after you 
that you would draw us, Lord, and that we would run after you with all our might, with all our strength, with all that we are, that we might encounter you, Lord God, in the depths of our being, having the eyes of our understanding open, Lord God, that we would seize upon you even as you seize upon us, Lord. Come in and take possession of your purchase inheritance in the midst of your people tonight in Jesus' name. And I am, the altars are open. I invite you to come forward, press in, encounter the Lord this night, have him touch you in the depths of your being, and go forth enriched by the ministry of the Holy Spirit coming upon you this night. Jesus.
Let the wind blow, let the tide roll, till the earth knows you're a God of love. Let me cry, go, sing a new song, all the glory to the God of love. Oh 
you what I hear the Lord saying. The whole time we've been worshiping, I see this angel standing up here. I've seen him standing up here this whole time. And I asked the Lord, and I said, Lord, what's this angel doing? He said he's waiting to open the door. And tonight he's going to unlock that door, and he's going to swing the door wide. And he says that the waiting period, I hear the Lord say that the waiting period is over. The waiting period is over. And when there's been that like this combustive thing where you've been in a place of waiting and you've been in this place of waiting and waiting and waiting and saying when and when, 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 I say to you now, now I unlock the door and I send the wind of my spirit and I say to you that the road is set before you and I say I release you into that new place. I release you into the new and I say to you, let the movement begin. Let the movement that you cried out to me for in this hour, let it begin. Let it begin to come out of this house. Let it begin to come out of this city. Let it begin to come out of this region. And I say to you that I put the wind of my spirit at your back. And the fire, the fire that you've been letting saturate you and soak in, I now release you with that fire. And I tell you to go to the cities in this nation in caravans. And I see caravans being sent out of here. I see teams going out. And I hear the Lord say that I am releasing you. And I am releasing you to bring heaven's atmosphere down into the cities in this nation. As they swirl in turmoil. As they swirl in chaos. I tell you, I send the wind of my spirit at your back. And I release you to begin to go. I release you to begin to flow. I release you now. And I tell that angel to unlock that door of opportunity. I say, let the angel of the Lord unlock the door of opportunity. And I say to you, I will give you all the provision you need. I will give you everything you need, all the supply. All I need is your yes and go. For I say to you, I set my wind at your back and the fire, the burning love of revival, the burning passion of my son, I have put in you and I release you now for the waiting is over.
Let the tide roll. Come on, sing it out. Till the earth rolls. Oh, you're a God of love. You're a God of love. Let the wind blow. Let the tide roll.
on the Lord right now. I just keep hearing the, the, the wings of the Holy Spirit in the room right now. Just keep your eyes focused on the Lord. Keep singing that song. And I, I feel like this band around my head and, and I know what it is and, and there's like this confusion that keeps hitting your mind. 
and you've tried to get out of it and you keep trying to get out of it and you keep seeking the Lord and saying, God, there's this tormenting in my mind and the Lord is here right now. The Spirit of the Lord is here right now to touch you. And if that's you, I just want you to lift your hands where you are right now and allow the Lord to begin to touch you. And I just speak to that right now. I speak to that confusion around your mind that's rooted in hopelessness, that's brought you in a place of despair where you feel like you can't get out. And I say right now that it lets go and it loosens your mind so that you can see clearly and you can hear clearly and you can understand what the Spirit of the Lord is wanting you to do. So I speak to that spirit of confusion that's coming against your mind right now. And I say, release, be released, be released. And may that ban just break off of you right now. And there's some of you that I've, I've felt right here in the chest that there's like this, you can't breathe and it feels so hard to breathe. And it's like you're trying to take a breath, but the, just the cares and the worries of things that are going on around you right now, financially and circumstantially are trying to steal your joy and rip out your breath. And the Spirit of the Lord is here to touch you right now. Play those drums a little bit more. Hit that bass. In the Spirit of the Lord, right now, shakes and breaks that spirit of hopelessness. And he speaks to that situation. And he says, let go and go free. I am all that you need. I provide every need. My children have never been found begging bread. I will take care of all those financial needs that you have that's oppressing you and sucking the very breath out of your out of your lungs. And I say to you, provision, provision, provision. My supply is on the way. My supply is on the way. Father, I thank you that right now that you are touching and you are setting people free even in this moment even in this moment even in their bodies in their minds in their soul in their emotions right now in the name of Jesus be free word 
that our brother gave. We were praying for a fresh door of encounter to enter into something new that the Lord wanted to do. So I want you all to position yourself so that you can take a step forward into the new thing. But first, I want to give you an instruction. Okay? The angel said there was a door. And it was a door into the new that God desires to bring us into. But there was a requirement. And the requirement was our obedience. So I want you to get into a place where you have a room enough to take a step forward as a prophetic declaration that you are going through that door into the new thing that God desires to accomplish in your life. And then throughout the week, in the coming days, I want you to look for opportunities where you can say yes to the Lord and take a step forward in obedience. And as you do, you will encounter the new that the Lord has before you. So we'll count to three. And as we take this step forward, I want us to proclaim Yes, Lord, as a declaration of our obedience unto him. You ready? One, two, three. Yes, Lord, we enter into the new Lord by an act of obedience, Lord God. Lord, help us to hear that still, small voice giving us opportunity to say yes and to obey you and enter into the new that you have prepared for us, Lord. In Jesus' name. At this, at this point, I'm going to release the worship team. Let's give them a hand. What an awesome night of worship. What an awesome night of the prophetic. And yet there's more to come. And the, we're going to transition at this point, and I'm going to give you the opportunity, if you had to have a chance earlier in the service, you can greet one another. I see a few people have come in after we've done the greeting, so take the opportunity. Then Victoria will come and do the announcements, and then we'll take the offering. <laughs> well, we want to welcome you guys, the beautiful body and bride of Christ. How are you guys doing? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Isn't he so good? <laughs> Isn't he so good? Isn't he beautiful? <laughs> Man. Yeah, Jesus, we just honor you again in this house. Jesus, we just crown you all night long. We just cast our crowns before you. And we just thank you. Like, what is man that you are mindful of us? We just thank you that you keep coming in. Keep coming in, God. 
keep coming in. Yeah, we just say yes again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We just, we kiss your feet, God. We wash your feet with our tears. God, you're the desire of the nations. You're the desire of the nations. And God, we thank you that you fill this room with your glory. And that we can stand and minister to you. Oh, amen. All right, I have a few announcements. <laughs> glory to God. First announcement is God's in the room. Um, hello. Um, this coming Saturday, well, tonight we actually obviously have a special guest in the house, but next week we have Russ and Kim Klein, which is another really close prophetic friends of ours. They're going to be in the house, Russ, Kim, and Shekinah, so they're going to be here. And also next coming Sunday, sorry, I'm like, got to wipe the tears. Um, next Sunday we have our woman's house fire coming up so it's going to be Sunday August 30th at 11 a.m. at Sandra and Debbie Daly so if you can wave your hand so all the ladies come on out we're going to celebrate the goodness of God and we're just going to keep receiving it's going to be they had a heart and desire to do it like legacy day so like mother daughter so bring like your spiritual mother your spiritual daughter or your physical mom whatever there is and uh, come on out. We're super excited. And then also I get the honor of taking up the offering. So for all the ushers, can you come forward? Glory to God. So if you guys need an offering envelope, can you please raise your hand? Praise God. And for all the online guests, you can give online at victoryfla.com forward slash give. You can also give on the app. I believe, and on the website. So go for it. Any other hands? Any other takers? Perfect. While you guys are filling it out, I'm just going to pray. What else do we need? Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we just thank you. God, we just thank you that there's a door open. God, and we get to walk through it, that we didn't have to beg you, but God, you give it freely, that it's a gift. And we just keep saying yes all night. We just say yes throughout the week, every day, God, we just have a posture of saying yes. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would take us where we cannot go ourselves, that it would not be by might or power, but we would say, this is the Spirit of God. This is the Spirit of God. So we welcome you. God, we welcome your word. God, to be the foundation of this place as Steve is speaking. And God, we just bless this offering. God, that what you're building here at Victory, God, that you would bless it. We, Lord, we just thank you that you build the house. God, it will not be built in vain. God, we thank you. You are building your church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so, God, we bless victory. We bless the finances coming in. And, God, we just say go above and beyond all that we can ask or think or comprehend. And so we honor you, Jesus. We honor you, the one who has all riches, all wealth, all glory. We just say you're king. You are God of this house. In Jesus' name. So I'm going to welcome up Mark. Galuski. Amen. Oh, yeah. Release. <laughs> Go for it. I'll give you a moment to take the offering. Then I have a special task. I have a scroll that was given to me by the angel of the house, which is the messenger of this house. So you'll have to wait a second. Okay, so as many of you know, our brother Steve is a dear friend 
of our pastor, Brian, who's the messenger of this house. So he sent this special scroll as a means of welcoming Steve here. So this is right from the pastor's pen. It is such a great honor and privilege to have our special guest, Steve Hansen, tonight. Steve and Tanya are the founders of Kingdom Ministries International. They are the founders of the City of David House of Prayer in Jerusalem, Israel. Steve has preached and ministered prophetically right here tonight in more than 30 nations. Their ministry base is in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where Steve serves on staff at Shekinah Revival Center as their prophetic director. Above all these things, Steve is a wonderful husband and father of five beautiful children. He and Tanya are also our very dear friends. Steve serves on our board of Light the Fire Ministries and Victory. We are so blessed tonight to have a very seasoned prophetic gift in the house and our dear friend of more than 13 years. So let's welcome Steve with honor tonight. Jesus, you're worthy. You're the worthy one. We're here to worship you. We honor you, Jesus. There is no one like you. You're the worthy one. Let your son be exalted. Let your son be exalted in the sharing of the word. Let your son be exalted in everything that transpires. You've already been exalted. Let it continue. Let your heart continue to come forward. Minister to this region. Minister to this city. Minister to those who dwell in this city, God. Let your heart come forth for Sarasota. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Uh, there's a couple of people that, that the Lord's uh, highlighted, and I want to give a word so you can keep playing if you don't mind. Jacob and Jonah. <laughs> the heart of the Lord. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> I'm happy you're here. The heart of the Lord. Is so towards you guys. And I just see the Lord's face shining down on you. And uh, the Lord really highlighted you even before I got here. And he said that you've been in a time where, you know, it's been good. And you've been pressing through and you've been going and going. And the Lord says that you're transitioning into a new place and into a new thing. And the, the things that you've been seeking me about and the things that you've been asking me about in the secret place and you've been pondering and you've been considering, I am now coming to meet you and I'm bringing you to a place that's going to be an open and a broad place. <laughs> kind of playing on your last name. An open and a broad place. You've been in an open place, but this is going to be even in a wider expanse. And I'm going to take you to various places and use you to release the atmosphere of heaven. I'm going to use you in this season ahead to begin to release that which your heart has longed for. And I'm bringing you to a place 
of even an increase in provision and an increase of supply and an increase even, I see an increase of a of, of team around you. And I see the Lord putting you on a new path. So, Father, I bless that. I bless them. I bless their family. Father, I bless everything that you have for them in this season ahead, everything that you have for them, that, that your face is just shining down on them, Lord, in great favor. And I see, I just see divine connections beginning to line up for you guys. I, I, I just see the Lord. I just see him walking up to you. And I see him tapping people and saying, hey, look at these guys. Hey, look at these guys. Hey, open this door for them. Open that door for them. Open this door for them. Doors of opportunity that you couldn't even imagine begin to open before you that you can move forward in great joy. I hear shouts of joy. I hear shouts of joy from breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. Father, I thank you for the favor of God upon them. I thank you for the favor of God upon them. I thank you. I thank you for the favor of God upon them. And there's such a healing anointing upon y'all's lives. Such a healing anointing. The enemies fought you hard to try and say, no. <sighs> yeah. I put it there It's always been there Yeah Never went anywhere But just grew In you Yeah Where the enemy has tried to lie And discourage you No I lift it off your shoulder gift of miracles that I've put in your hand and in your family and in your children and in your marriage and now the song it releases heaven's atmosphere of, of miracles and the miraculous come forth thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord yeah 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 Victoria Hidden one. <laughs> Hidden one. Hidden one. Hidden in the cleft of my heart. <laughs> I raise you up. And I bring you forward. For this is a season that I'm bringing you out of the shadows. I'm bringing you out of the shadows. You weren't hiding there because you're insecure or afraid. You were hiding there because you wanted to be hidden away in me. And you wanted to be in that place with me. And that will continue to happen. But I want you to know that I'm bringing you out of the shadows. And I'm bringing you to the forefront. And I'm going to use you in this hour to release the Father's song, the Father's heart, and the compassion of Yeshua, the compassion of my Son. And I'm going to use you in this hour to release my heart to set a generation free who is in despair, lost, and not just wandering, but running far in the wrong direction. And as you look out upon the multitudes of your generation and the generation in the earth, and you see and you've wept in the shadows, the song and the word of love that you will release to this generation, even, even as you look out in the spirit over the generation and you see and you've looked out over the cities and you've said, God, God, break in, break in, break in. God, shift things. God, set them free. I will go and I will do what you ask me to do. 
So I say to you, ask boldly. Ask boldly and declare it out into the atmosphere. And I bring you to the forefront. And let the Lion of Judah roar out of your spirit. And you'll see him. You'll see me. You'll see me shake my mane. You'll see me look and gaze. And then you'll release the roar. You'll release the word. For I've placed upon you a prophetic mantle. And I've placed upon you the word of the Lord. And I'll use you in this hour to bring forth my heart to a dying generation. And you will see the dry bones raise up. You will see life be breathed into the dry bones. And I'll do th have you do things that will seem strange to the natural eye. But it will break things in the spirit realm and set people free. I bring you to the forefront from the place of waiting on me. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. And Cody, you and your wife, uh, the Lord, the Lord says, I've established you in this house, and I've placed you here. And uh, I, I saw, like, over the time, I saw, like, a timeline behind you guys. And I saw all these points of encounter, and I saw all these points of encounter with the Lord, and I saw the points of encounter with resistance. And I saw you guys looking and looking back and going, man, what a journey. <laughs> and you guys, but, but in your heart, you were glad, but you were still like, what a journey. And the Lord says, now, from what you come through and where I'm launching you into, <laughs> wow. It's like, it's, I, I see like the ship. I see this ship. It's, it, it, it was like a sailboat, a small sailboat, and you were cruising, and all of a sudden, it turned into a speedboat, and you guys went whoosh, and you took off, and you set out in the ocean, and you went here and there and here and there, and you were in the Spirit, and you were releasing things, and the Lord says that I'm going to take you, and I'm going to take you all across this nation. I'm going to take you, and I'm going to release the sound of heaven. I'm going to release the kingdom of heaven through you. And I saw as we were worshiping, I saw musicians all of a sudden start coming in, in just in droves. I saw them coming from all over the place in this city, but also from the nation. I saw them coming, and even some from a couple of nations in Europe. I saw them come over to join because the Lord says, I am expanding the worship department. I am expanding the sound. I am expanding the expanse of your reach, and you need to have what I'm sending you. There's more musicians coming. There's more intercessors coming, for I'm going to send teams out of this house house. And I'm going to send teams. Did I not say that Sarasota was an apostolic beachhead that I would send teams out and they would come in and then I'd send them out and then they'd come in and then I would send them out. For out of this place, I will send teams into the earth to set the times and seasons aright. And I will send teams out into the cities of this nation where there's chaos and there's confusion. And I will send teams out of this very house and out of this city. For it is what I established this for. And I spoke over this city and I said it would be an apostolic beachhead. It would be a sending place. It would be a place of refuge, but it would also be a forerunner city. So get ready. Get ready. Because fairly soon there are going to be teams going out. Teams going out. And there's people coming. There's more, there's more, there's more. There's increase. Father, I release that. And I say unlock that into the heavens. Unlock it into the earth and unlock it in this house. Unlock it in this city. For I see the Lord has been doing something over this city for about the past six to eight months where he has unraveled, 
unraveled strongholds that have held this city in a place of captivity and held this city in a place of, uh, of, of like, it's like a lethargy. It's like a, it's just a, a, a place of, of just waiting, 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 waiting to where it wears you down. And the enemy has tried to wear down the saints. And the Lord says that the remnant of that I break and I shatter. And I say it's time for you to move forward with new momentum, with new vigor and strength for my spirit. For I, the Lord your God, remove the rest of the remnant and i saw like like what's uh you know in in the bible where dagon was there and it it crashed down dagon was crumbled it was already it was i saw this and i saw the ark in the presence of the lord and the sound of his people shake the city and it just turned to dust And the Lord says, the remnant of that thing that has held this place in a place of of a strong man is removed. And I say, I give you momentum, fresh momentum. And I, I see weary intercessors coming to this place. I see weary intercessors coming and being refreshed with new life, new vision, and new vigor. And the Lord says, I'll bring them in for I have called this place to be a place of refuge, refreshing, and release. And so I see the face of the Lord shining down. And I see people coming. And I see them getting what they need from the Lord in this place and being released. So, Father, I say yes and amen. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so. so. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Hmm. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the lover of your soul. He cares about everything. He cares about all your needs. He's the lover of your soul. (laughs) Mark and Kathy. (laughs) You were sitting in the Gibbs house, and you were sitting on the couch. And it's been a long time. It's been a long time coming. (laughs) And the Lord says, now is the time to release the word. And he says, you know what, when I saw you sitting there in their house, I saw like, like, uh, you know, when there's someone in a football game and they're, they're sitting on the sideline, they're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And the Lord said, there was a long waiting period. And he says, but now I'm raising the both of you up. And I'm going to use you in this hour to teach and to father and mother a generation. And I'm raising you up in this hour. And now is that time of release. And over the past months, you've been seeking me and you've been asking me for... Uh, material and for various things. I've given you some things, but there's more to come. And I'm going to use you to teach a generation of my ways, to, to, to learn my ways and to show them how to walk in my ways and that you're going to be a father and a mother to this generation. I'm going to bring in those people who are hurting, who are broken and have serious addictions and things that are in their life. And I will use you and I will use you to speak Speak to them the word of deliverance, the word of freedom, and the word of life. 
And you'll see bondages broken off. For there's a deliverance mantle upon your life for deliverance ministries and to see people set free. And there's a, there's a mantle on your lives to teach the word. And there's a mantle on your lives to release the Father's heart to this generation. And I'm going to use you in this hour. Oh, women that are abused and young men that are in bondage to set them free. Father, I bless them and I bless the ministry that you have for them. And I bless the work of their hands in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Victory, I just want to thank you all so much. Um, last night was a, a little bit of an interesting evening, um, but I want to thank you all for your prayers and for all the love and everything that everyone sent uh, to me today and last night, and I felt um, very covered in prayer, and the doctors looked at everything. They gave me a, a, a okay on my health, so I just wanted to update you on that and let you know that everything went well. Um, I'll be visiting my doctor when I get home and all that. So I was starting a new medicine, and they think maybe I might have had an allergic reaction to the medicine. I had um, just taken that medicine probably about an hour before I came, so it started to kick in, and um, things were happening in my body during worship and stuff like that. So anyway, we're not completely sure, but when I get back, I'll see my doctor. But I just wanted to thank you all so much for the love and the prayers and everything that everyone did, even in the moment. I mean, just how quickly everybody came up and and uh, came around me in prayer and just the love and everything. I, I greatly appreciate it very, very much. And I wanted to say, too, you know, um, uh, being back here at Victory and just the culture of love and the culture of honor and the culture of compassion that you all have is heart moving. And, you know, when I walked through the door when I came here last night, the overwhelming amount of love <laughs> and everybody, I think I think I must have got like a, the, a group hug. Y'all came at me right away and just the love and compassion that's here in this house. It's a testimony of of the heart of the Lord in your midst. And that is special. You don't find that everywhere. That's a very special, and it's a it's a testimony of, of the heart of the people in this house, and and it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be here last night. Um, I wish things would have went a little differently last night, like all you all did too, but um, here we are today, and I thank God for a finishing anointing on this trip. <laughs> so um, Josiah and Victoria are here with me, and graciously availed their time to video me to be able to finish and push through this message that I have that I, I really do believe is a now word. I believe it's a timely message, and um, it's a word for us in this season that we find ourselves in the earth um, with all the things that are going on, all the chaos, all the confusion. But at the same time, the Lord, he is moving. He is doing things. And he has a plan and a purpose for us in this time and in this season and has a plan and a purpose for his body, us as his people, his bride, to impact the earth. And I want to share about that. Um, and what I wanted to share about is about God's reformers in the heart of a reformer. You know, the, the Lord has had us in the book of Nehemiah for probably about two months now. Uh, about two months ago, the Lord spoke to uh, me personally, but then a lot of other people that are around me, people that I know, other leaders that I know, to read and invest our time in really seeing what he's saying through the book of Nehemiah because we are in that kind of a time. We are in that kind of a time frame. And we are in the time where God is raising up reformers in the midst of rebuilding, in the midst of um, restructuring, in the midst of revival, in the midst of a lot of things that's going on. You know, in Nehemiah's time frame, we can really see where that fits the picture of where we are. So I want to talk about that, but I also want to talk about 
the times and seasons that we find ourselves in so we can identify some things because, you know, it talks about the sons of Issachar and the sons of Issachar, they, they knew the times and seasons and it's good to know the times and seasons. It's, it's good to know the times that we live in. It's good to know, um, you know, what's going on, you know, what, what's this and that. But then we need to know what to do in those times and seasons. We need to know the heart of the Lord. We need to know what is our response supposed to be. God, what is your plan? What is your purpose for us in this hour? And, you know, it's easy to get caught up in in all the different reports, the news, you can watch the news, you can be on Facebook, social media, all those kind of things. And there's such a swirl. There's so many voices. There's so much chatter going on. But, you know, the, the, the thing that's going to really keep us try this here. steadfast and keep us grounded is this. The word of the Lord, you know, it trumps Facebook. It trumps Fox News, it trumps CNN, all those other things, all the other voices, all, you know, uh, every office of government in any, any political structure. This here is the eternal living word of God. And we want to dive into that. I want to go through the book of Nehemiah and I want to share some things that I really believe are key um, for what God is doing and what God is saying and what he wants us to do in this hour. You know, last night... Um, there were some words that came forth, and, and I still feel it being, you know, we're back here in the church today, and I still feel it today, um, you know, the, the, the presence of the Lord. And there was um, just a real commissioning from the Lord. I'm, uh, as I've prayed over time, you know, uh, about victory and about um, just, just what's happening here and all that, being on the board and, you know, being good friends with Pastor Brian, Pastor Bren. Um, I, I have had in my spirit that the Lord is going to begin to take you into a place of transitioning to where you're going to start taking out teams. They're going to be teams. And what I saw were like these caravans of cars. And it, there was such joy around those cars. There was victory. There was excitement and uh, vans and different things. And there were tents and there were musicians. And I saw so many musicians and I saw evangelism and I saw all this, I saw such life in these caravans, and I saw y'all going into various parts of different cities, things that were happening. Um, some of it was in D.C., some of it was in some hotbed cities, you know, going in, and I know we're beginning to see some of those things um, come out in social media, you know, but, you know, like I know Sean Foyt's doing things like that, um, but, you know, this is, I've, I've had this for months, months and months and months, and and it, it kind of coincides with some words that the Lord's been speaking to me about the season that we find ourselves in in the earth. And um, I just, I really sense that you are in a place of, of mobility now and momentum and that the wind of God is at your back and he's pushing you forward and he's sending you out. And this city, Sarasota, is an apostolic beachhead. You know, I know we use that term a lot lately. You know, people talk about apostolic centers, apostles, prophets, all that. But, but the word um, for apostle or apostolic is is the definition means to send or a sent one. And um, it's, a, it's a sending place. And I've known for years, you know, I grew up here in Sarasota. Sarasota is a beachhead. It's a place of refuge, but it's also a place of sending. And I really, uh, last night when we were in worship, I, I saw an angel, a majestic angel standing here in the majesty of God, in the glory of God, in the, the overwhelming awe of God was in here. And it was on the platform. And I saw this angel. And uh, when the door was open, open and unlocked. He was saying, go. He was saying, go. I commission you. And the Lord was saying, go, go forth, go forth. And so I really believe you're coming to a place where the Lord is going to begin to send out teams out of this house and ministry teams, worship teams, intercession teams, and you're going to go with authority and power and anointing to shift regions and territories for the glory of the Lord. And I saw like as you do, as you set up, as you worship, as you have intercessors around and you have evangelism teams that are going to be there to share with people, I saw the cloud and the fire, the presence of the Lord setting over you, and I just saw people walking up weeping 
weeping and, and that, you know, there's going to be the jeering and the, all that kind of stuff, but you're not phased by it. I saw you not being phased by it at all, but I saw the presence of the Lord just transforming lives, the transforming glory of the Lord. And I, I want to release that to you again, you know, with more clarity, because I really believe that you're coming into that time frame and it's beginning to uh, shift. You know, I believe the Lord's going to begin to release um, blueprints and things like that for that. Um, I also saw musicians coming together I saw um, more musicians, more intercessors coming into this place because the teams that are going to go out are going to have a lot more um, intercessors and, and musicians in it. So, you know, numerous strikes all over the place. So uh, I believe that that goes along with the word of Nehemiah and, and the God's reformers that he's raising up in this hour. You know, we, we find ourselves right now in a very peculiar time in a very peculiar place in history. And when we look out and survey what's going on in the earth, it's easy to get confused or it's easy to, you know, try and figure out what's going on and get really frustrated. But but the Lord wants to speak forth hope. He wants to speak forth vision and he wants to speak forth purpose because his people don't ever sit in a place of despair like that or hopelessness. He has purpose. He has he has hope and he has vision. And I want to release some of that to you tonight to or this morning whatever time it is, <laughs> um, to, to give you, uh, uh, share with you what the Lord wants to speak to you. So I'm going to pray real quick. Holy Spirit, I just thank you so much. I thank you for this opportunity to finish this message. And I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for Josiah and Victoria coming and doing this so graciously, God. I pray you bless them. But Lord, I thank you for the Victory family. Lord, bless them. Anoint them. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Let the heart of the Father come forth. Let the spirit of revelation come forth. Let the prophecy come forth which gives testimony to Yeshua's greatness. God, let your, let your presence just come in this message. And Lord, let hope, let vision, and let purpose stir. Father, I pray that even as, as I share this word, Father, that hearts would uh, begin to come to the forefront, hearts for purpose and hearts for moving forward with some of these things that you're wanting to do, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that this is a time that we're not to shrink back, but it's a time for us to advance as your people and advance in glory, power, faith, and anointing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you about God's reformers tonight. You know, we're living in some uh, pretty astounding times, and God is doing something in the earth. You know, like I shared uh, in First Chronicles twelve thirty two, it talks about Issachar and the tribe of Issachar. It talks about the sons of Issachar. I want to read it. Issachar were men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. You know, it's it's a time where not only do we need to know the times. I mean, it's you know, we can look around us and see the times, but we need to know what to do. We're living in very exciting times, and the Lord is moving in all kinds of powerful ways across the earth. But yet, at the same time, there's a great darkness that's on the horizon, you know, and and it's easy to get focused on the darkness because there's a lot of chatter. There's a lot of conflict, and it's it's abrasive. So it's easy, and, and the spirit of this age magnifies that kind of thing. But our focus should be on the glory of the Lord. Our focus should be on what the Lord is doing in this hour. You know, our focus should be on how the Lord is moving us forward in this hour to accomplish his purpose. In Isaiah 60, it, it speaks to that very clearly, that we are to arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord is upon us. And, and even though great darkness will cover the earth, it's our time to shine. It's our time to move forward. You know, and that word arise there, it means to get up. It means to stand up. It means to, to get out of that place of complacency. It means to arise. It's pretty, you know, simple put, arise. But it means stand up. 
The word to shine means it, it, it's ori in Hebrew, and it means to be set on fire. It means to blaze like a burning torch. So how to say that in, in that, that way is to get up, to stand up, and to be set on fire like a blazing torch. And it's not to be influenced by the darkness, or even in our mind or, or in our soul, but it is to impact the darkness with the light that resides in us the glory of the Lord for this hour you know and and the Lord is moving and we're in this time where where God is doing things in our nation you know we've been taking teams up to DC and I want to share something with you the Lord is moving there when we we we've had couple places open up to us to be able to go in. We go with teams that worship and do intercession over this past year. During the time of COVID, for a little bit, it kind of shut down. But now we're, we're going back in. And one of the leaders of one of those prayer houses, they said, you know, I want to encourage you guys. I want you to know something. I want to share a testimony with you. They said, um, in this very place, we have senators we have congressmen and women. We have all kinds of leaders of various departments that come into our building. And they share, they strategize, they come in here for prayer, they come in here to hear from the Spirit of God. There are believers all throughout our government that are impacting our nation and doing things, you know. And, and if you watch the media, you wouldn't get any kind of sense like that. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on, but there's a lot that God is doing behind the scenes. There's a lot God is uncovering. There is coming and uncovering like we've never seen. You know, uh, all these shakings, all these things that are happening. The Lord is doing things for a purpose. You know, uh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot happening behind the scenes that God is shaking out wickedness out of the earth. And, and we're about to see a great uncovering of a lot of things. You know, we're in a Psalm 2 era, and I want to read that. We, we can see things that are shaking. Governments are shaking. Nations are shaking. Cities are shaking. The church is shaking. You know, and there's, there's been a conflict in the earth in this time of shaking, but there's a purpose for it. There's a purpose, and God's purpose in this shaking is to dismantle power structures and like governmental structures, power structures, demonic structures that hold cultural systems and people groups captive to false deities and false ideologies for generations. He's shaking out strongholds so that the mountain of the Lord will rise above all other mountains of, of society. In Isaiah 2, verse 2, it says, It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above all the hills and the nation shall flow to it. We're in a time where we're seeing the mountains of society being shaken so that the mountain of the Lord can exalt above those mountains in society that all will turn to the Lord. And the Lord is shaking the earth. He's setting bloodlines. He's setting nations and people groups free. In Micah 4, 1 and 2, it says, It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and it shall be lifted above all the hills. People shall flow to it. Many nations shall come to it and say, Let us come and go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and we may walk in his paths. You know, nations cultures and societies they have boundaries they have foundations that they're laid upon in our nation it has a foundation it has boundaries you know and in the book of Nehemiah we see where Nehemiah surveyed he surveyed Jerusalem he surveyed the nation and he surveyed in specific Jerusalem he saw where the boundaries were torn down and we can look out across society and we could see where there are torn down boundaries but we as God's reformers in this hour are to go out and begin to restore those boundaries, both in the spirit and in the natural. And the Lord has a plan, and he wants us to do that plan. I want to read um, Psalm 2 because I believe we're in this type of a moment. 
We're in the time when God is shaking governments. We're in the time where God is shaking nations. And, and I believe that even in this shaking that we're seeing now, there's a purpose. God has a purpose. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and let us cast away their cords from us. He who sits in heaven shall laugh and the Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill Zion. And I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And listen. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. And the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with the rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like the potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry with you and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. I want to read verse 8 again. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. When we see all this shaking... And we see all these things going on. I want to tell you, God is in this shaking. God is in the shaking of government structures that are holding people and have held people for decades in a place of captivity. What has been the word of the Lord to the church for the past eight, nine years, ten years? Some, some prophecies have come forth even before that. That we have entered into the time frame of the greatest end time harvest that we've ever seen. That we are entering into the time when the greatest end time harvest of the nations that we have ever seen has come in. And in this decade that we are going to see the, the harvest come in, the voice of the Lord go forward, and that there's going to be that harvest. Now if, if there's a harvest and if there's a move of God in the nations, and there are government structures that have held those nations, there's going to be a battle. There's going to be a battle over that harvest, and we're seeing that happen. We're seeing God give nations a choice to bow down and kiss him or to stay in a place of rebellion. There are consequences for that, but we're seeing governments shake, and we're seeing things that are, are, are in movement right now where nations are being sifted. We're at a threshing floor moment where governments and nations and leaders and, and, and regions and territories are on a threshing floor, and they're being tossed up, and the wind comes and blows away. things. They tossed up again and blow. And in that place of contention, there's a decision to be made. And it's all about the harvest. It's all about the Lord receiving the reward of his sufferings. It's all about that. It's all about Yeshua receiving the reward of his sufferings, the end time harvest, the nations of the earth, the people groups of the earth. It's all about the end time harvest. It's all about him getting the due reward for his suffering that he paid on the cross. It's for the people groups of the earth. And so we can see where governments, there's contention all over the world for the seat of government and how nations will go in government. But our nation, the nation of America, we say that it's going to bow down and kiss the sun. God is calling our nation back to its covenant root. God is calling our nation back to a place of destiny in God. God is calling our nation back. And he's sending out his bride into our nation to call our nation back. And to bring her back to her first love. And Lord, we even now, we just declare out over our nation that she returned to her first love. Father, where there's all those shakings going on. Where there's all these things happening in the earth. Lord, I thank you that you are wooing us and you are drawing us back. And Lord, there's a remnant in this nation that is rising up and taking our nation back, both spiritually and in the natural. And I want to go now to um, Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah. Let me turn there. And I want to talk to you about a heart of a reformer. 
and how Nehemiah's heart responded. And I believe there's some key things in this. You know, the, the, the purpose in reformers and in the purpose in what Nehemiah did, it was to rebuild what the, the, the city of Jerusalem is to rebuild and to bring back the splendor and the glory of the Lord. And I believe we're in that place right now in our nation. So I want to read out of the book of Nehemiah. So again, I, you know, a few months ago, the Lord began to speak to me and said, read Nehemiah over and over and over. And I, I began to listen to it. I began to listen to it on my um, audio Bible and read it. And I want to give some context to this. But let's start in, in the first chapter of Nehemiah. Now, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, it came to pass in the month of Chislev in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel. Let me give you some context to this. Nehemiah um, was in exile. He was in the place of exile. You know, uh, Israel had rebelled. They were taken into captivity. They were in Persia. Um, his counterparts were Ezra, Haggai, and Zechariah. They were already back with the remnant. Um, they were rebuilding the nation of Israel. And uh, if you remember in the book of Haggai, uh, it was it talks about the rebuilding of the temple and it talks about, you know, why would you build your houses and not focus on the house of the Lord? Ezra was calling people back to the word of the Lord. So there's all this going on. But Nehemiah, he was in Persia and he was in uh, the it's what would have been the winter capital for the kings of Persia. And it was in the winter time. And it says that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah. Judah is the city of Jerusalem, that region, that area of Israel. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. So he's inquiring. He's saying, hey, what's going on with the rebuilding? And he says, and they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. Now listen with your spirit. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. Now, he asked for a report, and he said, what's going on? And now, think of where we are in our time. We look out, we look at a report, things are burning, things are broken down, things are being torn apart. What is Nehemiah's response? Did he get angry? Did he freak out? Did he go into a rage? Did he start yelling, doing those kind of things? No, no, he didn't. He immediately went into prayer. So it was when I heard those words that I sat down and wept. His heart was broken. I mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the Lord God of heaven. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and your mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your, attent your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you, both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you, and have not kept your commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray, the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, Though some of you were cast out to the farthest parts of the heavens, which they were at that time, yet I will gather them from there, and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name, which is Israel. Now these are your servants and your people, whom you've redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. O oh Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of man, for I was the king's cupbearer. You know, Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah was in that place of captivity. Although he was in a place of exile, although he, he, he was in a place where he wasn't in the promised covenant, although he was in a place where 
all the people weren't seeing the fulfillment of God's word, his heart was steadfast and set on the promises of God. And when he heard about the report that things weren't as they were supposed to be, his heart was broken. And the you know, the people at that time, the people of God, they were scorned by the nations and they were scorned by those who had held them in a place of captivity. And he could have got mad. He could have he could have responded in the wrong spirit. But Nehemiah found himself immediately broken in heart and he went before the Lord in prayer and fasting. And the first thing that a heart of a reformer does when it hears something of this nature, when it sees that we've broken the heart of God, it, it goes goes into a place of repentance. It goes into a place of prayer. And you see Nehemiah, he, he not only um, repented on behalf of himself where he started, he repented on behalf of the nation. He repented on behalf of the families of the nation. And, and those weren't even, it wasn't even him. He went into a place of intercessory prayer, identifying himself with the place of the nation. And so you see in this time that Nehemiah, he began to repent. He began began to seek the Lord, and he began to ask the Lord for forgiveness. That's the first thing the heart of a reformer does. And then you see from that place, the, in the place of humility where he humbled himself, he goes then into a place of reminding God of his word. And you see here he, he reminds the Lord of what he spoke to Moses. And he says, remember, I pray, the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, if you're unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast to the farthest parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. So he postured himself as an intercessor. And he did all these kind of things in secret before the Lord. There was no um, public advancement yet that he started, but that was about to come. The team effort was about to come. And he reminds God of his covenant promises. And, and as, as we just read there about reminding him of the covenant promises that he spoke to Moses, I want to read another scripture that we've been focusing on during this time. Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. If I shut up the heavens so that there's no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour, to devour the land, or if I send pestilence amongst my people, my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And so we've come through this time of repentance and we've come through this time of seeking the Lord, but then there comes a transition in that time when the favor of God shines down on those who've humbled themselves before the Lord, and they begin to receive favor. They begin to receive uh, blessing and provision. You see here in chapter 2, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to read it all, but you see for uh, uh, the king, he sees Nehemiah, and he says, why are you troubled? And he says, well, I, I, my, my heart is set on my homeland. My heart is set on what, what the condition of my homeland is. And the king turns to him and he says, well, what do you want to do? And he says, well, I want to go to my homeland. I want to rebuild. I want to survey it. I want to rebuild and I want to take people with me. And the king says, well, let's do it. Go ahead and do it. And then, and there's this transition that happens out of the place of secret repentance. There's this transition that happens out of this place of, of Nehemiah before the Lord by himself, where he now goes and he begins to go into Jerusalem. And when he goes there, he surveys it himself, and he looks amongst the place. He receives favor. He receives blessing from the king. The king gives him money. The king gives him protection. There's a guard that goes with him. And, you know, we're in a time right now where the Lord is beginning to send us out. And we're in a time now where the Lord is beginning to release us into the nation and the nations again. You know, we were in that place of, of uh, quarantine. We couldn't really go anywhere. But the Lord is saying, I want you to go out. And I want you to go out with boldness. And he's giving provision and protection. And then you see in chapter 2, Nehemiah, he goes and takes a time for a little bit to survey it himself. And he looks over the city himself and he sees where it is, where the broken down places are, so that he can get a plan and he can get a strategy. And you know, I know there's been a lot of teams going into the nation capital and they've been getting a, a strategy and they've been getting, you know, this, this blueprint that God wants to do. 
And so even though he was going in there, there was something that was stirring in the enemy's camp. The enemy found out that he was coming, and they found out that he was there, and they tried to mock him, and they tried to stop him, and they tried to keep him from coming, and, but he kept going anyway. So Nehemiah, you see where Nehemiah postured himself as an intercessor. Nehemiah put himself in the place of an intercessor. He put himself in the place of someone who was crying out to the Lord and fasting in prayer. He wasn't concerned about about his cares and worries. He was concerned about the concerns of the Lord. He was concerned about the concerns of his people and how they were before the Lord. And he went before the Lord in fasting and prayer, and he humbled himself before God. And it began to move the heart of God. And then, you know, uh, I'll move through this fairly quickly for the sake of time. We'll jump through chapter 2. But the king, he noticed Nehemiah, his heart. And there was a recognition of the sorrow in Nehemiah's heart. And he asked Nehemiah because he was in a position of being the cupbearer. He was a close confidant of the king. The cupbearer is the one that drinks, you know, the, 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 the wine. I don't know if I'd want that position. It's the guy that drinks the wine to protect, you know, the king, that there's no poison in it. He's, he's the one who brings the cup to the king. But anyway, he was in a place of high favored position. And the king noticed and he said, what's wrong with you, Nehemiah? You, you look really troubled. I'm going to kind of paraphrase it for time. And and then he says, to, gives a report to the king, and he says, uh, my people, my place, my city, my heart is burdened for them, and my heart longs to go back to my homeland. Excuse me. Now, can you imagine being in a place of exile and being before a king in a nation that doesn't like you, in a nation that has you as their slaves, and you're with the king, and you say, I want to go home. You know, as, a, as, as what would be, even though he's in a favored position, he was, he was still considered a slave. You know, the Jews at that time in that nation, they were slaves. And he says, I want to go home. I want to go home. My heart is burdened. I want to go home and rebuild. But, but, but God, because if you look back, the Bible clearly decreed that there would be a time, the word of the Lord decreed that there would be a time when the kings of Persia would send back the Jews back to their homeland. There clearly was a decree and a prophetic word of a future time and a future event that would move forward a purpose of God in a time that seemed to be hopeless and seemed to be despair. And I, I want you to hear that with your spirit. You know, the times we live in, if you look out and you see, it's, it seems like times of hopelessness and despair. But there's a word of the Lord of purpose for this time. There's a word and a decree of God from decades before before, all through those decades of this time that we've entered into now, that this would be a time of harvest, that this would be a time of seeing souls come in like we've never seen, seeing lives transformed like we've never seen, seeing nations turn from goat nations to sheep nations like we've never seen, that there would be a sweeping revival, an awakening, that global awakening like we've never seen for the end time harvest of the Lord. So my question is, did God change his mind? Did COVID make God change his mind? Did, did all these things make God change his mind? All these policies and governments change his mind? No, it didn't change his mind. God never changed his mind. You know, just the same as here, God didn't change his mind about the prophecy he released to Israel. And he said, you will come out of that place of captivity. And he looked for a man. He looked for a people that would humble themselves and do it. And he found a remnant. And Nehemiah was part of that remnant that would fulfill the word of the Lord. And I say to you that we are a part of that remnant. We are a part of that people that hear and know and discern the times and seasons and know what to do in those times and seasons. And it's time to rebuild. It's time to rebuild the homeland. It's time to rebuild. It's time to rebuild and it's time to see revival and awakening. So here you see the king, he, he looks upon Nehemiah with favor and he says, go ahead, I send you forth. And in it you see he gives him provision, he gives him blessing, he writes him a letter of passage, and he gives him protection. There's protection that comes for Nehemiah. The king sends his guard with Nehemiah. So Nehemiah goes forth. When Nehemiah comes out of that place of hiddenness, before the Lord, 
And now he begins to move forward. And he moves forward and he goes in and he surveys Jerusalem. He goes around and he sees and he begins to survey where the breaches are, where the breaks are. He gets a, he gets a, a, a blueprint, a battle plan. He gets a, a, a plan of action. He looks at the, the water gate. He looks at the gate beautiful. He looks at all these various gates all around Jerusalem. And he looks at the homes and he looks at the things and he sees where things are broken down. And he begins to get a plan from the Lord. So Nehemiah, then he meets with the the leaders and he says, we need to rebuild. We need to begin to rebuild. And they begin to do, I'm going to move quickly uh, through chapter 3, and you know, uh, the rebuilding begins to happen. But at that time, as they begin to gather, the enemy of Israel begin to find out and hear a report. Hey, what are they doing? They're starting to rebuild. What are, they, what are they doing? They start jeering and they start mocking. Trust me, as we move forward in this hour, as we move forward with the word of the Lord, as we move forward in the things that we're supposed to do in this season, there's a mocking and there's a jeering that's going to come against us to try to stop us, to try to shut our voice up and try to keep us from doing what we're supposed to do. But we're not going to stop. And I say we're not going to stop. I say we're going to arise with glory and we're going to shine like Isaiah 60 says, and we're going to burn with holy fire in this hour, and we're going to bring forth the purposes of the Lord in this hour. And so you see, all of a sudden, Sanballat starts jeering and mocking and, you know, looking at what they're building and saying, ha, if a fox runs on that, it's going to fall down. You know, I have a, I have a stone here. Forgot I had that. I was, this is from Nehemiah's wall. And when Nehemiah surveyed, he saw these broken all over the place. He could have stopped there. He could have looked at the desolation and the brokenness. But he had a heart and a purpose in the word of the Lord in his spirit. And he knew that his purpose was to rebuild. And in that place of prayer and in that place of staying before the Lord and travail, the Lord gave him a plan and a battle plan. And he then began to assemble the peoples and he began to put them in place and set them in their place along the wall. He began to gather the families of Israel all through chapter 3. You see here, I'm not going to read it, but I'm just going to kind of uh, highlight some words in it. You see, Nehemiah began to structure a structure and a battle plan and he began to give momentum to groups. He began to give momentum and the Lord is doing that in this hour with us to rebuild. And so you go through chapter three, you see, you you begin to see the rebuilding. They built as far as the tower and consecrated it. They hung doors and put bolts in. They rebuilt the gate. They made repairs. The nobles made repairs. The sons made repairs. They hung doors with its bolts and bars. They made repairs. They made repairs to homes. They made repairs to stores. They fortified the walls. They made repairs to breaches in the walls. As you start to see, there's this movement that begins to happen. And it begins to move forward. And you begin to see the building come to place. You begin to see the plan of God come to place. You begin to see all these things begin to come together. And then we hit chapter 4. The enemy rises up, and he brings an attack. And he tries to discourage the rebuilding. The mocking continues. The jeering continues. The things begin to continue. They keep building. He called them feeble, weak, mocked them and said, Will you build a nation again? And I say, this isn't in the scripture, but I say, yes, we will. It says, they're weary. Look at them. They'll never finish. The walls are going to fall if a fox runs on it. But then, in chapter 4, verse 3, I'm going to read this. They pray. Verse 4. Hear, O God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So we built the wall. 
And the entire wall was joined together up to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Here we see a couple of things. Number one, we see the people got in unity. The people prayed to the Lord and asked the Lord to do battle on their behalf. They reminded the Lord even of what he promised to them. Again, a covenant reminder. You know, there is a covenant that has been made with our nation. There's a covenant that has been made. And as we've gone to D.C. on these trips, the the Lord has told us to call America back to her covenant root. He's told us to remind God of the covenants that were made with America, that America would be a bright and shining star, that America would be a bright and shining nation, that we would send missionaries all over the world, that we would be a nation that would export the gospel into the earth, that we would be, be, be a nation that brings in the harvest. And so now you see where the teams and the groups of people that Nehemiah had raised up come together. And not, now it wasn't just Nehemiah praying. It was the, all of them together praying and reminding the Lord of his covenant. And so you have a unity that comes amongst them as they move forward. And Nehemiah then from this place, he says, I'm going to set a watch. And I think this is very key here in verse 9. He says, I'm going to set a watch. And he says, nevertheless, we made our prayers to our God. And because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. And I think that there's something new. There's a, a, a fresh wind blowing on the house of prayer. There's a fresh wind blowing on the tabernacle of David movement. There's a fresh wind blowing on intercession and worship groups going into these places. And you can see it already beginning to happen inside the cities. You see, it's coming out of the building, and I think this is part of the movement. We've we've been in the building. We've been in the place here, but the Lord is saying, go out the door. I want you to take this now out into the cities. I want you to take the house of prayer movement. I want you to take the worship and intercession movement and with evangelism combined, and I want you to take it out into the city where the chaos is, and I want you to bring the atmosphere of heaven. I want you to bring the kingdom of heaven, and as you intercede and as you worship and as you do what you're called to do out there, watch heaven come down in their midst and watch me exalt my name and watch me transform lives. We're not seeing people come into the church building in droves. The, the, the plan for the Lord has changed. We're to go out. We're to go out into the cities. We're to take the teams out and we're to go out in faith and not fear. There was a unity that came in the battle plan. There was a unity that came in the plan to rebuild amongst the people, amongst the leaders. And I believe the Lord is saying there's a unity coming amongst the leaders, amongst the people, amongst the remnant of the battle plan of the Lord. It's no longer in these four walls. It's out there. And we need to go out. And we need to go out with the glory and power so that the people can see and his name be made great in the streets. I believe that the Lord is changing the battle plan. You know, as you go through chapter 4, There was a a watch set day and night in the city. They were out. They were building. There was proper positioning of the leaders and rebuilders. And there was an encouragement for them to move forward. And the last thing I want to share out of this is the rallying cry. And I think this is where we're at right now. As we look out and we see the breaches and we see the things where we're building and we're trying to repair... They were, they were all over the place. But there came a command that said, when you hear the trumpet call, when you hear the trumpet sound, come. It's time to rally at that place. I believe that there's trumpet calls coming out that's highlighting various places where the enemy is trying to come into our nation. And there's a trumpet call that God is releasing in this hour. You know, we look at Portland, we look at Seattle, we look at Um, uh, San Francisco, Minneapolis, Atlanta, Dallas, uh, Detroit, you know, all these places where the enemy is trying to stir and he's trying to do things. 
And there's a trumpet call coming out of the church. There's a trumpet call coming out and saying, rally here. There's a trumpet call coming from heaven saying, rally here. Come here. And I believe we're going to begin to see God's reformers rise up in this hour in a company of reformers in teams and go to these cities and begin to bring in the atmosphere in the kingdom of heaven. And I believe it's going to be numerous places. It's not time to sit idle. It's time to build. We need to repair. We need to lift up the sound of worship and intercession in the cities in our nation, in the nations of the earth, that will shift the atmosphere and bring the kingdom's order. You know, it's a time to build. He said, he told the people, have a hammer in one hand. And he said in the other, I want you to have a sword. It's a time to build and it's a time to war. We don't war against flesh and blood. We war for the souls of men. We war against principalities and powers. And I believe that the Lord is rallying, sending out a rallying call, a trumpet sound to the church. Come over here. Come to this place. Gather here. Come here and build. Get out of the place you are at and come over here and build. Come over here and release the kingdom. And I believe it's time now for the remnant to become mobile, for the remnant that's been in the four walls to begin to move out and to begin to rebuild in the nation. Put your boots on the ground. The Lord wants to set you on fire in this hour. He doesn't want us to be idle in fear. He wants us to be mobile and moving forward with momentum that takes the land to see the harvest come in. Again, everything the Lord does is revolved around the harvest of men and making his name great and making the name of his son great. His son paid a price for the nations of the earth. And it's time that we go out. It's time that we begin to arise and shine. Get up and be set on fire. For your light has come. The glory, the kabod, the weighty presence of the Lord has risen settled itself upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, a deep darkness the peoples. We can see that. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. His glory will appear upon you. I want you to determine in your heart to be set on fire like never before. Give him, like we talked about last night, your unconditional yes to what he wants you to do in this hour to accomplish the task before you. Don't listen to the external voices or the internal voice that tell you you can't do this, tells you you're not worthy, or tells you you're a failure or to look at your past. Maybe it tells you you're not anointed enough or it sits there and accuses you like the voices of Sanballat and those around him. Who do you think you are? How do you think you're going to rebuild this? You're going to do this in a day? <laughs> Whatever. Don't listen to those voices. But step forward and answer the call in this hour in faith and love. And let the Lord consume you afresh and anew. Don't look back, but move straight ahead. Let him use you in this hour. Yeah, the darkness, it, it's getting greater. But we know the greater one that is the light of the world that dispels that darkness and he uses us to do it. So come give him your yes afresh and anew and let him set you on fire again. Father, I thank you for reformers you're raising up in this hour. Those who, like Nehemiah, humbled themselves before you who identified with their brethren, who identified with the nation, who identified themselves in a place of secret, of fasting and prayer. And then your time of transition came after they humbled themselves and they, they reminded you of your covenant. They moved forward 
to see the fulfillment of the promise of the covenant, of the word that you release, that if you do this, I will do this. If you do this, I will do this. God, we hear you in this hour speaking to us as a church. If you do this, I will do this. I have not forgotten the words that I said that would happen during this time. It's a time of harvest. It's a time of the end time harvest. It's a time of signs, wonders, and miracles. It's a time of me shaking the nations and you rising up and bringing the kingdom's power to set people free. For I'm shaking the structures that hold them in the place of captivity to put them in a place of freedom. Put them in a place of harvest so that when the sickle is swung, the souls will come in. God, we hear you and we give you our unconditional yes. That we go out of these four walls and we go out into the streets. That we release the sound that we so dearly love and hear and we bask in and we enjoy to take it out there to a lost and dying world in the atmosphere of heaven that they can see and understand that our God is alive. He lives and he still sets people free and he can set you free and you can find his love. Father, I thank you that you are raising up reformers in this hour in all spheres of life. This is a time when the mountain of the Lord is rising above all other mountains that all will come up and worship him. God, we give you our yes. Send us. Send us as groups of believers. Send us as companies of families. Send us as companies of local congregations. Let us link arms to rebuild our nation. Let us not look and be bewildered by this destruction that we see, the jeering of the enemy, but let us rise up in faith and power with hope and joy and go out with singing and bring the kingdom to a lost and dying world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity to finish this message. And uh, I bless you. Thank you all for having me. It's an honor and a privilege. I love you all.